सो प्लीज वेलकम अवर चेंज मेकर दाक्ष थैंक यू सो मच फॉर दैट इंट्रोडक्शन हाई एवरी वन सो आई एम दक्ष जस्ट अ ब्रीफ इन इंट्रोडक्शन अबाउट माई सेल्फ पोस्ट दैट इम्प्रेसिव वन आई हैव डन माई बैचलर्स इन इंडस्ट्रियल डिजाइन पोस्ट विच आई हैव वर्क एज एन इंडस्ट्रियल डिजाइनर फॉर अ कपल ऑफ यर्स पोस्ट विच आई डिसाइडेड टू फर्दर परस्यू डिजाइन एज एन प्रैक्टिस अकेडमिकली सो आई एनरोल माई सेल्फ फॉर अ मास्टर्स एट आई आई टी गुवाहाटी द कोर्स इट सेल्फ वॉज वेरी एक्सप्लोरेटरी इन नेचर हेंस द रिजल्ट दिस थीसिस एंड नाउ करेंटली आई वर्क एट मिंत्रा एज अ यू एक्स डिजाइनर वर्किंग विद देयर सप्लाई चेन मैनेजमेंट डिविजन सो गेटिंग राइट इन टू इट माई प्रोजेक्ट माई थीसिस प्रोजेक्ट फॉर माई मास्टर्स वॉज कॉल्ड वॉइसिस एंड इट्स अबाउट ब्रिजिंग टू जेनरेशन्स विद द फर्स्ट part of this uh, uh presentation uh i'd just like to highlight this uh, pressing issue that uh india is growing uh between 2015 and 2050 the proportion of the world's population over 60 years will nearly be uh, doubled from 12% to 22% by 2020 the number of people aged 60 years and older will be out outnumbering the ch children younger than 5 years so the pace of population aging is much faster than in the past uh just a look at stats uh, the elderly in india currently are at about 100 million and uh, by 2050 they will be about 350 million along with india all countries face major challenges to ensure that their health and social systems are ready to make the most of this demographic shift so uh uh my next uh, topic would be that emotional health impacts mental health uh mental health is a very known subject uh who defines it as the general state of well-being that allows one to cope up with the normal stresses of life and make a contribution to one's own community emotional health is a step before this and uh, it refers specifically to the positive and negative effects resulting from life events that contribute to one's overall mental and physical health so in a way uh, emotional health is uh, a step before mental health and uh, that's what this topic was all about and that's where it started india is home to around 100 million elderly individuals currently with better standards of living and medical breakthroughs there is a life beyond 60s around 15 million of these elderly individuals are all alone today absence of any useful goal directed activity a dull inactive mind hastens disability a sense of social withdrawal and feelings of neglect emotional illness in this segment of the society is under identified and often medicalized the stigma surrounding this makes elders reluctant to seek help or communicate the same so my real motivation to tackle this prog problem began not too far from home and uh, here you can see my grandparents uh, frolicking with the sensational trend of fidget spinners uh, when it hit the markets and uh, like we got them one each and they were just uh, playing with it for a very long time uh, so we belong to a very close knit family uh, yet over time i started no noticing how unheard and neglected they were feeling and while i wanted to do everything within my reach to uh, make them feel otherwise i could see them uh, spiraling down the uh, the road of critical introspection and feeling neglected as if nobody is hearing them out and they don't have a say in the family and uh, this sort of uh, took me back to my english uh, classes back in school which uh, spoke about the seven stages of a man uh, by william shakespeare for the sake of this uh, presentation to be so short i'll just uh, focus on the last two stages i'll just reiterate these uh, phrases uh, the sixth age shifts into lean and slippered pantaloon with spectacles on nose and pouch on side his youthful hose well saved a world too wide for his shrunk shank and his big manly voice 
turning again towards childish treble, pipes and whistles in his sound. Last scene of all that ends this strange eventful history is second childishness and mere oblivion. Sans teeth, sans eyes, sans taste, sans everything. So Shakespeare did not invent the idea of stages of life. Philosophers have been uh, addressing this for millennia. Uh, Aristotle had uh, four ages of a man and uh, they were extended into seven ages uh, during the Middle Ages where philosophical and religious lists were usually in sevens. Uh, you would have come across the seven deadly sins, the seven sacraments, the seven heavenly virtues. But anyway, enough of that trivia. Uh, getting on with what I, why I chose to uh, get transported back in time was that all these philosophers and poets and artists had something in common. That they were acknowledging the last stage of a human's life. Uh, and they were articulating it uh, uh, through showing that uh, a person's influence slowly slips away and they gradually accept their fate. So uh, it's an inevitable truth of aging and uh, that's what uh, got me started in this project. Uh, so where it took me? So uh, like I told you, I was in a master's uh, uh, course uh, back in Guwahati and uh, we were uh, on a campus that was on the outskirts of uh, the city and we were on the other side of Brahmaputra river and there was no way to actually uh, do user research as this, as they say. So I began to wonder how I could better encapsulate the problems of the targeted audience. And after interviewing a few elders uh, within the campus and uh, visiting nearby hospitals, I just realized that I needed a larger audience at a single space. So uh, it also opened up my mind about the scale at which I'd like to tackle this problem in itself. Like, would it just be for my grandparents or would I want to take it further? So um, I uh, decided to go to an orphanage. Uh, Amar Ghar is an old age home located in Guwahati, which currently houses about 28 elderly individuals aged between 65 to 85 years old. And I spent a few weeks uh, visiting them and in the process got a glimpse into their daily lives. And I interviewed a total of nine participants over a few weeks. So how I did that was actually spent, we had visiting hours and we had to spend like limited amount of time. So my mapping about the user research uh, had to be in a very slow and steady process and uh, these are some of the uh, participants that took part in my uh, a very informal interview and uh, yeah so at the end of this uh, like any new UX uh, designer I thought of a knee jerk solution like which came very very involuntarily to me uh, which was uh, the process of contextual inquiry as all UXers might know that we record statements. So uh, like these are some of the statements that came out of the interviews uh, that I held with the elderly. And uh, most of them uh, focus towards the fact that uh, they are alone even when they are together uh, in a cohesive unit with the same uh, age groups and uh, wanting to spend time with each other, they get bored of it eventually. So uh, from user statements, I went into my observations that they are usually optimistic about meeting their children and their grandchildren. Uh, in some cases, they visit often. In some cases, they've just abandoned their uh, elderly patrons at the old age homes. And loneliness is a major issue. Uh, they're very curious to know about the outside world, uh, to explore more about uh, what's happening outside, apart from their daily dose of newspaper and maybe TV once, uh, like for one hour every day. Uh, so uh, some of the insights that I gathered was uh, similar to my observations that long, uh, they long to see their loved ones however sour their relationships are. Uh, they cannot rely on regular activities all the time. They usually eventually get bored of it. Uh, they are socially very active outside their uh, ecosystem of the orphanage itself. Uh, left? Okay. I'll just quickly take you through my insights. So, uh, uh, so the problems that I funneled down to was uh, low frequencies of visits by the uh, patrons' uh, relatives, uh, limited avenues for engaging patrons, uh, physical and organizational limitations, and uh, fixed venue for social interaction because uh, their motor skills uh, are usually not up to the mark for them to be outside. Um, so again, as a, a very young uh, uh, 
uh, very motivated UX designer, uh, the solutions were pretty evident for me. Uh, I thought of a companion like a artificial assistant which would be virtually connected to the elderly. I thought of gamification patterns where uh, they would keep them engaged and uh, it'll help in their co cognitive reappraisal. I thought of virtual reality tours of since they can't go out, so probably uh, sitting at their uh, own space they can uh, uh, have a glimpse and a taste of the world outside. But uh, uh, while I was discussing about these solutions uh, during spending time with the elderly, uh, there was a statement that struck me and uh, it was something that uh, really made me like look back at the problem. Uh, so one of the patrons said that uh, these toys cannot replace time with my granddaughter. Like, so all the solutions that I thought of and I spoke about, they were already called as toys. So uh, after all of this, I just thought that I'll focus on, uh, uh, I mean, the solutions were not evident anymore. And I thought of uh, fixating myself on new modes of social interaction. And uh, the themes that I wanted to anchor myself, my project around was connect, empower, educate, uh, keep them young while you can. So the missing piece of the puzzle uh, was on the other side of the social strata lie children from orphanages. Uh, many of them have found a home and a sense of purpose uh, through selfless efforts of uh, non-profit organizations. However, they still lack social in interactions and a chance to learn about life experiences from elderly. Uh, so, um, the project that I thought of is not something new or it's not something that has not been already done. But uh, the means to do it was something that I uh, wanted to like take a uh, step back and think about. So, uh, the final concept was uh, around intergenerational programming. Uh, so, intergenerational programming helps in bridging the gap between the young and the old and the purpose of this is mutual benefit through planned interactions. Uh, they, the aim of such programs includes planning, preparing and uh, conducting activities uh, using evidence-based practices to achieve a wide range of educational, developmental and psychosocial benefits. So uh, these are some of the snippets from the pilot that I uh, carried out and uh, uh, how I divided it uh, was into three phases. Uh, first was about realizing the system, uh, then about advertising it and then about uh, just two minutes, yeah. I'll just wrap up. Uh, and then about propagating the same. So uh, by the, uh, how I went about this was, uh, uh, the system would be the ident identification of the stakeholders and their motivations, uh, creating an awareness video of which, uh, whose snippets you've already been uh, watching. The future scope of this was uh, uh, going beyond the social cause and using technology as a me means to make itself sustainable. So the pr proposed technological solution will connect indi individuals uh, willing to pitch as volunteers. And uh, so uh, there was a system that was uh, envisioned and like the, uh, how I believe to see it is something like this where the primary objective was to create interactive patterns which will help in aligning the emotional needs of the elderly and uh, children for mutual benefit. Uh, the secondary uh, objective was uh, to focus on the human co connect and use technology only to assist the scope and not as the more uh, like the core of this project and the stretch objective uh, was uh, to build a community of conscious uh, conscious uh, and sensitive young individuals who would be the key to sustain the system uh, in reality the facilitators could keep changing uh, whilst the connection between specific old age homes and orphanages remain intact uh, thus creating a long term bonding between uh, the primary users which are the children and the elderly. So thank you, Dash. Thank you. That's my time. I loved your initiative. That's really noble what you did. So this is a small token of appreciation thank on you. the behalf of UX India and all the participants here.